back to a little bit we were talking about before. I could, when we were talking about like the MLS stuff. The, I saw one of the comments you made one time about like artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. How big of a piece do you think that's going to be going forward for the real estate industry? It's already happening, yeah. and um, we can we have to uh, wrap our minds around having tools that empower the realtor. So AI should be able to. Uh, why do I have to go do the search once I've set you up? Shouldn't I be able to not only put in the house attributes, but maybe your attributes? Yeah. And then once I've set you up, shouldn't it be, uh, instead of me going to have to pull it every day, and even using prospect match or you know, yeah. sending yourself, it should be served up to me. Here's my client, here's what he should be seeing. This is important to him. Mm -hmm. And then watching through Collaborate, you're familiar with Collaborate. Yep. I came in after I stopped selling, but okay. I still like familiar with it. Right, so if you take Collaborate and now you're doing searches, I should be able to help you as a consumer as well as the realtor be informed of what that consumer is looking at and serve up the best opportunities for them. Yeah, it's like they, and then I assume like it would be a great one where it's like the consumer could even go in and change their search without the need for the agent to physically go in and do it. Yeah. Because I think that's like a big change we've noticed. Like, Another one that has always interested me, because like, this is like, so like the MLS data sheet, the remark section is pretty small. And like historically people always wrote it for agents. It was like, you know, you have the cap size and so it's, you know, the data comes to the agent. That's why you get like all the short form that no one understands except for agents who are in it for a while. But now you almost have to write it for the consumer because they're the ones actually half the time doing the search and then telling the agent which one to go see. Like, do you guys have any ideas like, or look at expanding how much people can actually say about a property and put that on there now that times have kind of changed and it's um, different? Yeah, uh, this is one of the subjects that we've been talking about. How do we, uh, here's a challenge. Everybody wants the listing on one piece of paper. Yeah. Sure, we can do that. We can make it a thousand words, yeah. but it's gonna be two pieces of paper. Yeah. How many people would rather have it on one sheet? And we actually used to get complaints that they'd have to print it off. Yeah. Oh, you're costing me money because it's on two people? Okay. Yeah. But that's real. And so we, we have to listen to everyone and yeah. all their concerns. But I agree with you. If you should be able to, you should be able to explain it in its yeah. entirety, but do you really need a thousand words? So Maybe not that yeah. long, but like, because like I know some like, I remember when I first saw like the example I always had is I kept seeing in listings I had no idea what it meant, just BWL. And that took me so long to figure out what, what does that, that mean, meant. anyway? Broad room, broad loom, we're laid. See, you gotta explain <laughs> I had it. no idea. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like I remember, I went into my office and someone, I think there was someone who'd been in the industry five years who also was like, I don't know. Yeah. And I just we kind of got lucky that a ten-year veteran had been walking by and we're like, Do you know what this is, Lynn? <laughs> yeah. She's like, It's broad loom, we're laid. <laughs> but, See, that's yeah. true. But like, I think that's, I think that's the one notice that I've seen of like on the MLS side is like. People haven't made that switch to writing them for the consumer instead of writing it for other agents. Mm -hmm. and like, but it is a member-to-member -member system, yeah. right? It's, it's designed between member-to-member, -member and, and although in a client listing we do mm -hmm. give that information, but I, I know what you're saying. And I, That's I, where I think like, the brokerage mark should be also bigger, but that separate, that to the agent, then have the consumer facing it. Okay, everybody has to remember he said it, so don't <laughs> complain to me about two pieces of paper. Uh, I'll take the blame, you can yeah, message me. Yeah. I'll show you how to stop using paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's a good point. And I think we're, we're, we have to think that way. We have to think about what is the best way to provide this. Yeah. A lot of people are using the attachments. Yeah. So they'll put a feature sheet or they'll put more information in yeah. the attachments so that the realtor will get it. But we don't. That's not consumer facing. Yeah. So we have to think about what is. How do we serve that? Yeah. And and create that trust bond between uh, MLS and the consumer. That's part of the problem with uh, with uh, some of the occurrences now in, in how MLS is working. Yeah. Um, if you're in Hamilton or you're in Niagara and it's a travel listing, um, how do my consumer the consumer sees yeah. that listing says you're not showing it to me. So you lose a little bit of trust, you lose a little bit of that bond and that uh, MLS, what, all the good that MLS has done over the years. So we're, we want to solve these things yeah. and then put the information in the hands that the realtor wants to give them. Yeah. As long as it's not too much. So in the in terms of like that, because obviously it's been in the news a lot, like sold data, all that stuff. Have you seen now that people can actually incorporate it onto their site, have you seen a lot of people actually now taking advantage of that or is it a pretty small? No, no. There's a lot of people operating vows. Um, the order itself is very specific. We, yeah. it, there's a lot of work that we have to do to police that yeah. and make sure that everybody's complying 
And at the same time, uh, we've recently had a court order win, uh, uh, basically uh, justifying our IP yeah. in that. So we do have to make sure people aren't misusing it or monetizing it or yeah. doing those things. Um, I'm not sure that uh, it's as innovative as I, I suppose some people would hoped, yeah. would have hoped. But um, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are actually using the virtual office websites today. How much of the policing is like members who are just like, whether they know they're doing it or it's just like a, I didn't realize I had to do it that way and that's what you're working on with them versus people who have no like license or anything like that trying to like scrape the data like is yeah, you know roughly they, how much it is it's it, we're, we're focusing more on those that are outside mm -hmm. uh, at this point although we are reminding our members that they must adhere to our yeah. agreements and uh, as a, um, uh, agreed to with the competition bureau and the order itself yeah so if you've got someone who's really not paying attention to let's say the sign in yeah. component then yeah, we, we remind them. So one that I'm curious about, because like with Realtor.ca kind of being like right now the standard for home search in Canada, different than like in the US where there's a couple different options, even though Zillow is probably the main one there. What was the like reasoning behind bringing out Treb Home for people to search instead of like having them just use Realtor.ca? Um, a couple things. Um, uh, we, we had, a, 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 I guess, a disagreement with Korea on one matter which was the alternate feature sheet. Yeah. I'll, I'll just talk about that for a second. So uh, a few years back, uh, we have a provision in Stratus that if you populate this one URL for the alternate feature sheet that is um, your listing on your website, then when you would click on the, uh, uh, away from the thumbnail in realtor.ca, it would drive to your website. Yeah. And we had some brokers that were, were getting traffic of about 36,000 consumers yeah. on their websites and that dropped to like a few hundred after they removed that so they complained yeah. and Korea really hasn't put it back yeah. so we thought uh, we, we've got a great uh, relationship with Stratus in that way and they they produce this it will be an adjunct to collaborate at some point so that you know information will flow back and forth and uh, and we've inst instituted the alternate yeah. feature sheet. That's funny. We actually, back when I first started the company, at, a, at the time a guy was like working to become a partner, work on the tech side, and we saw how much traffic was coming from a listing to an agent's website. We actually started building a tool that would detect which listing they're coming off and redirect them to that listing on their website. Because they would always just go to the home page and they'd, you'd see a high bounce rate of people not finding the listings. Right. So we had built a tool that would detect the incoming URL and redirect them. But then Korea made changes and we couldn't now see the incoming URL. Not too bad. So we just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> but it was, interesting. But like, there's a lot of like little things there where like there's more uniformity. Like, there's so many benefits, I think, that could be made. Well, I was on the MLS Technology Council for Korea at the time when yeah. we instituted the alternate feature sheet. <laughs> and we been fun. <laughs> well, it was. And, and remember, this is like since the inception of Realtor.ca. Yeah. And, uh, and we saw this as a real way of driving traffic to the Realtor. Yeah. Isn't that our job, right? Yeah. So, and I understood the arguments for uniformity and the links out and all this yeah. stuff, but in, the, in reality, it's gotta go to the Realtor, yeah. right? So that's our goal. And, uh, and plus we'll have a little bit more control. And every other, webs every other uh, association in Canada has one, so yeah. why is it a problem that we do it, <laughs> yeah. right? And that well, was a problem. I was more just curious <laughs> in the sense of like, because I've, so many people use that, like I look at like Oakville, like I don't know anyone, because I have a bunch of people I know in Oakville and I'll ask them about it, don't even know that there is like a site they could go to that's not realtor.ca. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting when I see like, and whether it's Trevor or others, bringing out their own, basically compete with it. I don't see it like, as competition, yeah. it's additional. Right, so you may want your client to go there because it drives to your brokerage. Yeah. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want to promote it. Um, I don't think we really compete with yeah. Realtor.ca. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So switching a bit, because I remember was, we've we've had a conversation like privately about it before, and I've spoken to brokerages too, and like some who are involved with Trev, some involved with Aria, who do a lot of like agent training who feel that both Treb and Aria shouldn't be involved in training agents because they feel like that's a brokerage duty. But I know you guys also, and you guys and Aria also do a lot of training. Like how do, how do you guys feel about that like mentality from brokers of like you guys shouldn't provide training to agents because that's the broker job? But, but I need you to, to define training. Whether it's, 
like here's how you market your business. Like, no, we don't like, do a lot of that. No, no we, we, I know we have a few because we do get asked to provide that, but yeah. not really. Yeah. We spend most of our training time on teaching people how to use, I don't know, lone wolf yeah. forms <laughs> or you know, Stratus yeah. or Collaborate or public records. Uh, that's what our, our uh, most of our uh, traffic is on. The training. Uh, we have some legal stuff that we do, mm -hmm. uh, commercial stuff. So it's uh, it's very diverse, but not yeah. focusing on sales. No, that's so that's one that you do mostly leave to the mm -hmm. brokerage level. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it's not or, our domain. It's just not irrelevant no. to you guys. <laughs> well, yeah. no. Although yeah. we do some of it, yeah. uh, only because we do get asked to do it. But yeah. it's not our core. Yeah, it's just our like core it's is. You, you have to know how to use Stratus, yeah. and and that's an actual um, a mandatory course now, when you first join, and all, as well as um, uh, we have this um, uh, essentials yeah. course, uh, uh, and it helps people get off the ground because they come on. Unfortunately, they're coming yeah. out with no knowledge of how to do real estate. Yeah. So one that I've always found interesting with agents is talking to them about like what the different associations and levels actually do. Like if you talk to like a lot of agents like, okay, I know Korea does realtor.ca, I know Aria does like the forms, and then education before they didn't, they lost that, and then you guys do like the MLS. Obviously, like each association does a lot more than that. So, for like those who aren't really sure, like what is the main role outside of like administering the MLS for like one, like your role as CEO, and just like the TREB role in the marketplace? So, I think the, the, um there are several different departments, uh, professional standards and arbitration. That saves people the, offer, the, the burden of having to go to court. Uh, professional standards mainly because of our rules and play within you know, the lines. Uh, we also have, um, uh, uh, and I hate to say them in this order, but they're coming to mind this way, GR. Uh, government relations is a big portfolio here. We help at all levels and obviously we have a strong voice. Uh, when we did our Outlook report, so we do a lot of analytics, and when we did the Outlook in February, we had about 147 million impressions, yeah. uh, and it went coast to coast to coast. Uh, we do a lot of advocacy at the local level, and we help at the other two levels. So GR is probably uh, uh, one of our biggest portfolios. We also have communications at, at all levels, so yeah. consumer relations, uh, member relations, uh, to get messaging out, and that's really hard to do. Yeah. I know like government relations happens at all three levels. So like how much are kind of the three groups working together and coordinating their efforts versus stuff you guys are kind of doing on your own? We, we do coordinate quite a bit. Yeah. Um, we don't, uh, at the other levels, we depend on ARIA for provincial and yeah. CREA for um, federal and national uh, regulations. But we do participate, we do yeah. have opinions. Well, as like the biggest <laughs> one, you kind of have to be involved, at least at the provincial level, I would mm -hmm. think. Well, federally too. Yeah. I mean, we are a high concentration of people here. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's about 50% yeah. of the agent count in Canada, right? Roughly? Uh, I would say 40, maybe 40. a little over that. Yeah. I, I think so. I have never haven't done the math in a while, but <laughs> yeah. I would say probably 40, yeah. There's yeah. 130,000 where yeah. we're approximately 58, no, okay. 54, so. Yeah. And well, then however many come through with this latest push of <laughs> new people coming in? Yeah, that'll be interesting to see yeah. how that works. Uh, so are you guys prepared, like, do you guys like know like, here's how many agents like we could successfully onboard to Trev a month without basically being clogged up and like basically breaking down your system? Like, are you guys prepared, like say like 10 times the number of agents came in in one month, how that would look? We do our best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's aggressive. Um, yeah. I don't know, uh, that, that many. It's possible, we'd have to do our best. I mean, Rico had a problem a little while ago. Remember, yeah. their system was down. And, yeah. uh, but, but I don't know, I, I, I guess I have to think about that now, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'll send my fee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I actually had some questions. I wanna make sure I don't sure. miss anyone's questions that they had. That way, we just pull it up. All right, so let's make sure we're not missing anyone's. So we talked about that, we're good there. So one, have you seen any, like what do you think are the most creative or effective uses of the sold data now that it's a little bit more open? Have you, or have you really seen to any? No, I haven't. Um, I, I just see people who are basically exposing it and, yeah. and allowing people to search it. Um, but anything innovative, creative, not really. Have you? 
Not really. I mean, it's I have I barely anyone I know is even really leveraging it to do that much. Like I know we had a lot of people when it got announced ask us in like on the marketing side what could we do to leverage it, um, but no, I haven't really seen too much being done with it. We're a little concerned about the privacy part still. Yeah, uh, we do get a lot of privacy complaints, and uh, and the privacy commissioner has been. Um, I guess working internally, and they don't see it as a privacy issue because of the order and how it's yeah. you know, behind a, a sign in. But people, both buyers and sellers, have concerns about their photos. Um, some of them just don't want that information. There was an article a few weeks back, I think in the Globe and Mail, that talked about how the luxury market is coming off the MLS. Mm -hmm. They're trying to stay yeah. away from uh, exposing. That's an unfortunate thing, yeah. that dilutes MLS. And also pending solds. I've, we've always argued that pending solds really is not a transaction. It's it's it is not. It might be firm, but it, it's still conditional on that last day, right? right? And we're always concerned that, and so are consumers, that uh, that they don't want that information out there. But it is what it is. The Isn't order is what it is. Like most of that information, basically already out there. Like newspapers report on sold prices, and like anytime you go, like for instance, I had a neighbor who sold. And didn't even put up a for sale sign recently. So unless you like happen to notice online it was for sale, and like the next day after, because I paid attention because I obviously am still an active agent technically, like I have the access to the data, I knew it sold. But the next day when I was talking to people on my street, they all already knew the sold price within like 24 hours, and they hadn't even. So like, isn't that kind of like a people already seem to have that information? So that that's that's the question I hear, or at yeah. least that was argued. And um, I can tell you that in my neighborhood, when people talk about knowing other people's sold prices, yeah. um, they're usually wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so if you go to a seller and say, what did you sell it for? Now you can find out if you go on a bound. Yeah. But even back then, I would chuckle because i say, oh, I already sold for X number of dollars. And I'd say, well, mm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. answer. But I think that uh, the, the, some of the newspapers, if they're getting it through a member, is that right? Yeah. Is that right? Uh, I mean, the order is specific. It's for realtors, yeah. for real estate business brokerage services. Right. So we have to think, uh, what is that? What what is the intent of the of the order mm -hmm. to help innovation in the marketplace? Yeah. And so you haven't really seen too much of that yet. I guess it still takes time to do some good innovation. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> and I and I don't yeah. mean to be facetious. I'm I'm more. Uh, or even, uh, I, I, I'm not sure they accomplished what they thought they were going to accomplish. So we have a few more, um, which we've covered most of them. Uh, so one here, how do you guys plan to com compete with sites like House Sigma, and if there's plans with Realtor.com, start providing more info to consumers, which kind of gets passed along to the We don't plan on competing. Yeah. That's not the goal. Yeah. Uh, we serve members. That's what we hope to do. We want yeah. members to compete. He's a yeah. member. They're a member. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Let them let them do what they have to do and and help them uh, succeed. Yeah. If they're as long as they're within the limits of the law. Yeah. Right. So the other one here. So it's two more that I've seen. Sure. So one is this could really I guess apply to any of the fields on the MLS. Why is square footage and source not mandatory on like the MLS data sheet? Um, are you talking about residential versus condo? Because in condo you have you got a square footage. And she didn't say which one. She just said why is square foot and source not mandatory? Uh, because you don't have to do that. And plus, some people are reluctant to put in square footage. Yeah. If it's not mandatory, it, uh, we've had issues with square footage in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, people have uh, there have been litigation. Uh, uh, one of my first deals. It wasn't my problem. I was yeah. just involved. <laughs> I wasn't even really involved, yeah. but um, if, if you get a builder square footage and they show you X number of square feet, and then eventually somebody measures and says, this is wrong. Um, and the other one is age. Age is a problem. How do you verify 100%? So we opt that out. You choose, yeah. right? Makes sense. Uh, David Kurt wants to hear some old football stories. <laughs> 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 yeah, thanks, David. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I don't have any. <laughs> no. Happy about Ezekiel Elliott signing? <laughs> yeah, very. Yeah, so you know I'm a Cowboys. I heard. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's why you had a couple people, because like some people also private message questions, which were basically the same questions yeah, that were there. Sure. And then there's a couple along the, ask me about the Cowboys. I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah this my, <laughs> my son said to me yesterday, yeah. he got, um, oh, I almost said something there. That, that, was, that would have been defining. It was my birthday, so my son, you got a birthday present yesterday, so yeah. Ezekiel and Elliot uh, <laughs> that was signed, so that's awesome. Yeah. I, I do want to mention one thing that, that, that we talked about before, the, yeah. the number of people, uh, the number of deals being done. Hmm. And you've got all these people opining on how many people uh, are doing deals. We only report on the deals that are being done in the GTA. Yeah. But if you look at the deals that members are doing outside of the GTA, last year yeah. was actually the fourth best year in our history. Mm -hmm. We actually ran about 164,000 transactions through the MLS system. We only reported what we reported, yeah. but if you take that number now, it's a different animal. And that includes commercial, yeah. leases, uh, rentals, all those things outside and inside. So, so when the they number report the like 40% do zero deals, that could be someone who's working outside Toronto, but it's just like a trip member. 100%. And then not only that, you've got teams. So how do yeah. you explain the teams when the lead person yeah. is the one that's getting credit for all those, and all those people are members? Well, so, so I was always curious about unfair. with the numbers, because then there's people like me who have my license, and I stopped selling now six years ago. So there's been the odd referral coming through, but that doesn't count as like a deal. No. Um, and then like, I know when I got my, so I did the residential course, I think there was 15 people in the in class, half had no intention of ever selling. Right. Because like there was appraisers, um, just house flippers who wanted to do their own. So like, that's what I was curious about, like, is there actually any tracking of like how licenses are like for people like that actually intend to sell? Because that's always find the misleading one of like, oh, the average agent makes below minimum wage. Well. If you look at the average, they're not actually working. Like there's so many that aren't even trying to contribute to that do. number. That's not yeah. what they do, right? So they do uh, they do other things, perhaps, yeah. or property managers. Right. So they manage properties and they do rentals, mm -hmm. not necessarily through MLS potentially, or some yeah. through MLS, but they've got other responsibilities. And uh, but but I just found that it was very unfair for people to say those things. And yeah. I think Jason did a session on that, covering those things at uh, Realtor Quest last year. Yeah. So you guys do realtor quest every year, because uh, I know like one that happens a lot where I like I'll speak at conferences and I'll get a lot of people come and ask me how can I speak at a conference like that too like so for kind of aspiring speakers because we seem to get a lot of them reaching out if they were interested in speaking at like a realtor quest what does your evaluation process look like for bringing speakers in? Um, so, uh, if, if that person, if those individuals want to, uh, to put their names forward, they contact us yeah. and they, they can send it to myself or, uh, or Tisha um, and uh, we'll put it through the process and it's evaluated by professional development. Yeah. Um, some of the people that we choose that are um, some folks that always draw, yeah. um, I'm sure you know some of them, and, uh, and then we look for outside speakers. Uh, but again, we don't really focus on the sales and marketing yeah. of things, but we try to be yeah, We have people who talk, I, think, I just mean general, because there's a lot of, like we get people asking us to speak at our conference, and we try to keep our sales and marketing, because that makes sense for sure. mine. Um, but then the people who can speak with other things also has that. Yeah, that, yeah, whatever the subject matter is, if it fits within our theme, yeah. and, and we find that it's within our core competency, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely look at it. Um, uh, uh, Realtor Quest has changed quite a bit. Last year we, yeah. we we had over 10,000 people there, and then the, you know, our keynote speaker really drew a crowd. Yeah. Were you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, but we hope to have that type of an environment, but if it's a learning environment, it's better too. Um, There's certain um, skills that people do need today, uh, but again, we don't want to step on toes. Yeah. So, so I know like a lot of the questions we got were around like, when are you switching to Matrix, when are you getting off Stratus? That, and I always believe like, if you're gonna criticize it, like, get involved. So if people wanted to actually like, have input on that process because there's committees or boards like what should they do to try and get involved and help like be involved with all that so apply for a committee mm -hmm. and then show up to the focus groups i <laughs> yeah. mean people you can't apply and then not show up um that's pretty telling right yeah. so if you're going to be committed uh, participate and we also have uh, um we had town halls we yeah. were asked to do town halls and the people who asked to do town halls didn't show up so <laughs> yeah, you know you know, if you're going to uh, comment, I'd love to hear it. Yeah. So come and listen to the, uh, the, the, uh, the presentations and, and ask your questions. We're happy to help. Um, but, but yeah, apply for a committee 
and um, and you're you'll be competing. We have, I guess, over three or four hundred people that apply, um, and but we want the best of breed there too. I know, like some associations and boards that we've talked to, and like they do courses on like basically like developing younger agents into like eventually becoming leaders down the road because you need mm -hmm. that you know twenty years from now as an example right. like. Does Treb have things like that where you guys are helping to kind of like groom the future leaders who are going to come in? So YPN does that, and we've got some really smart people there too. Uh, we'd like to see turnover and pe more people get involved. Uh, at MLS, we've got some young folks as well, and we want to make sure that we're giving everybody an opportunity to succeed and help. Yeah. Um, some of the things that you know, I have no idea. Yeah. Right? I mean, Maybe so. <laughs> but, but, it goes but, both ways. There's but, a lot but, that I have no idea. But, but, you know, there's certain people with certain skills in their, in their yeah. areas that, that need to be involved. Yeah. So what, kind of from the TREB perspective, would you guys look at as, like, potential disruptions coming? Disruptions? Yeah. We are a disruptor. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean that. Uh, look. It's changing really fast. The, the rate and pace of change right now, and the breadth of it, I've never experienced in any industry before. Uh, and it's happening within, it's coming from outside, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the money coming in from Wall Street, uh, billions of dollars being invested in the space. You've got uh, organizations that are creating platforms that will, will keep the business within their environment. You've got technology coming in from all sides, and new things that we haven't even thought of yet. There's dilution of MLS. There are fractional ownership uh, solutions out there now. It depends. Uh, you, you know, the shared economy. Think of the shared economy yeah. and, and what the impact will be on that. The, I, I, I tell a story about Fortnite on how they kept putting up those uh, posters. And not that I was playing. Let's get that clear. But <laughs> You're not like a pro <laughs> and about to win a couple million. <laughs> uh, but my son was showing me how, look, this poster, it's, something's going to happen. Sure enough, that, uh, sure enough uh, 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 Marshmallow had that concert with 10 million viewers on Fortnite. Yeah. That's insane. So that's just showing uh, how the uh, social construct is changing as well and how technology is, is blending the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah. Right, the blending, the blurring of the lines between humanity and technology, that's happening. So in the next little while, we will see change that we really didn't think of before, maybe in the next, not in the next five years, but certainly after that. Yeah. Uh, and I know that there are uh, some um, AI initiatives out there that will change things yeah. in the next little while. So I think we need to really focus on uh, how do we uh, stay relevant, how do we adapt these technologies how do we adapt to uh, the forces around us and, and, uh, and work in the best interest of, of our member, right? Yeah. And, and make sure that we still facilitate that the member, the realtor, is part of the, the, the process. Awesome. So that was it for this week episode. Uh, stay tuned for next week. I don't know who the guest is going to be, but you can see next week because by then I'll have filmed it. Uh, so thanks for coming on. I really oh, appreciate it. You. That was a lot thanks of fun. Thanks for the beer. Of appreciate course. The, anytime. The chat. We'll continue with. Anytime you need me to speak at a conference, I'm available appreciate to. Come on up. Next yeah. year, Blue Mountain. I'll have you. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. You do yeah. that too. Yeah, we so. do that every single year. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming.